hi and welcome back to my channel merry christmas to you and your family i hope you are somewhere enjoying your christmas i hope that this holiday season has been a very special season for you um today is december 25th 2019 and i am committed to you passing okay uh, i could be doing something else but i'm doing this with you okay and i'm gonna go and do this with my family um, but Merry Christmas! I hope that the gift that I'm giving you, you're able to give back to someone else. And I'm giving you the gift of time, the gift of knowledge, the gift of understanding, and the gift of commitment. The only thing that we are required to do is to be better than we were yesterday and be consistent. And so in my consistency, I hope that it's blessing you to be consistent with the other things you're doing. Merry Christmas to you and your family. If this channel has helped you, if this channel is helping you, please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and ring the bell for notifications. I'm going to jump into it because just like you, I want to get to the food, okay? So this video is going to be about information system usage and application. A lot of you all have talked about this. This uh, comes from the um, chapter 9 of the Mosby Review Book. Remember I told you about the Yellow Mosby Review Book? That is the book that you all should be using to study, okay? Um, that's the book I recommend, but I will tell you that any book, any type of, you know, um, review material should work. However, this PowerPoint comes from that chapter, and that chapter is literally just for information system usage and application, okay? Uh, so this is going to just kind of give you about 10 questions that you might see on your exam. I've had some friends tell me that, Lindsay, the stuff that you talked about on your the YouTube videos was actually on my exam. Shout out to all of my friends that have passed their PTCB exam in 2019. Shout out to you. May God continue to bless you in your career. And I'm so excited I was a part of your success journey. I'm going to jump into it. Drug food interaction. Which of the following is a drug food interaction? Which of the following is a drug food interaction? So what would you say the answer is? If you pick C, the answer is correct. Come on, come on, my people. I know you know. I know you know. Let's go to the next one, input device. Input devices are used by both patients and pharmacy staff. Which of the following is not an input device? Which of the following is not? Is it a touchpad on the debit machine? Is it the mouse connected to the computer? Is it the keyboard on the cash register? Is it the printer that creates the receipt at the register? It says, which of the following is not an input device? Okay, I gave you a little hint over here just to kind of help you out a little bit because you know I like to help. Um, but if you pick B, your answer is correct. Okay, B is not an input device. E prescribing. E scribing provides many benefits. One of them is what? Increasing the time to fill a prescription, increasing medication errors, providing a paperless prescription transfer, um, or that it may incur a fee. Which one, which one of these is a benefit? Providing a, a paperless prescription transfer. C is correct. Okay. <clears throat> Electronic record. The electronic record of a patient health inform information generated by one or more encounters in, in any care delivery setting is the, is it the RAM, the CPOE, the EHR, or the HITS? The electronic record of patient health information generated by one or more encounters in any care delivery system is the what? Let me give you a hint. You see the E for electronic, then you see health, right? And you see record, okay? Do you see a R-A-M up here, anything? I see something that starts with the R, but I don't see a, a word that starts with the A. And I see a word that starts with the M, but that wouldn't be it, okay? Um, I see the H, in hits, I see the I, and then I'm looking for the T, I don't see it. Remember I told you before that this test is common sense. 
it's really a lot of common sense. If you can decipher and use your common sense, you're going to be fine. The correct answer for four is C, E-H-R. Electronic health record, I gave it to you. I helped you out. Output device. Output devices send information out of the computer. Which of the following is an output device? These are all output devices. Sorry, which of the following is not an output device? And I've listed them all here, okay? The printer is here. We see the keyboard. Um, we see the monitor. I'm sorry, we don't see the keyboard. We see the like a little laptop type thing. We see the monitor and we see the speakers over here. The monitor is here. That's what that was. Um, and we see a printer, but what we don't see is a keyboard, okay? And so the correct answer for which of the following is not an output device would be keyboard. Okay, I'm so proud of you. Don't you stop. You've come too far. You've come too far. Somebody right now is doubting. They're looking at these questions and they're like, you know what? I'm not ready for this. How am I going to pass this? You bet not doubt yourself. You've come too far. Somebody somewhere is watching you. To give up now would be would be something that will let people down. You got to show them. Remember all those people that said you couldn't do it? Remember all those people that said you wouldn't be nobody? Do you remember those people who told you that nobody would ever hire you and look at you now with a job? Then you are somebody. And you've made it over hurdles that you never thought you would make it through. And so this right here is not here to make you feel bad about yourself. This test is not working against you, it's actually working with you. And so all you have to keep doing is telling yourself, work with me and not against me. Work with me and not against me. Speak positivity over your head. Speak positivity in the atmosphere so that the creation can hear what you're saying. What you put out is what you get back. Automation reduces. What is automation? <clears throat> automation, pharmacy automation. What does it do? Is it the clinical skill a pharmacist need? Is it accuracy? Does automation reduce accuracy? Does automation reduce the amount of time to check prescription? Or does it reduce drug use control? Automation is not a skill that a pharmacist needs. Let's be very clear. Automation is pretty much where a robot, a robot handles um, the filling process of the script, okay? So whenever you think about something that is automation, think about an automatic. Like if you drive an automatic car, which I do, sweetie, because look, that's six shift for me, it's not gonna work. But if you think about an automatic vehicle <clears throat> and it's like it does something without you even having to shift gears. When you're driving and you're in drive, if I want to slow down, I can slow down. I don't have to shift the stick. If I want to go faster, I can go faster. I don't have to do anything extra, okay? So automation is going to be something that automatically does it, okay? Uh, and this answer, the amount of time to check the prescription is what the automation reduces. It reduces the amount of time to check the prescription. However, if you, oh, excuse me, if you are using an automation system to count controlled substance, whether it be a controlled substance four, three, or five. We know it wouldn't be a two because twos have to be counted by hand. But if it's a four, five, three, four, or five, then even after the automation system has dispensed it, you still need to pull it out and double count it again. In pharmacy, when we double count medications twice, we circle the quantity so that the pharmacists know that we double counted it. Okay, so let's say, for example, you get a prescription for Xanax, you get 30, prescription for 30 Xanax, right? Um, for whatever reason, it's in the automation system and the automation system produces the 30 pills. You need to pour it out on your counting tray. We know that we count pills by five, so that means we get them five all at one time. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to do a video on that because I've had somebody ask me before, like, maybe how do you count the pills? I'm like, you don't, you don't know? And that's okay. I'll help you. Look, I'm here for you. Uh, and so once you count them, you need to circle it so that way, um, so that way the pharmacist will know that you counted it twice. Okay. So again, 
Automation reduces the amount of time to check the prescription, but if it is a controlled substance that is being dispensed, make sure you count it twice. Remember, everything you do in pharmacy is tracked by your ID, your ID number that you use to log into the account, okay? Everybody is given like some type of ID when you work at the pharmacy to log in underneath your credentials. If there is a mistake that happens, if something goes wrong, the patient comes back and say, you know, such and such didn't give me the right pills. You guys didn't give me the right pills. They can track that back to see who, you know, actually filled it. And you just want to make sure you cover yourself, okay? Think about CYA. Pharmacy is about CYA. Cover your assets. <laughs> CYA, cover your assets, okay? Uh, protected health information. The law that requires protected health information, which is also known as PHI, is to, is to be held confidentially. Sorry, I'll read that again. The law that requires PHI, protected health information, to be held confidentially is HIPAA, PSAC, NCBPD, or NCPDT, sorry, and our script. We know that the law is HIPAA. Health Information Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. I don't know what it is. Y'all, I smell that food. My mouth is watering. I can tell you uh, personally. Um, number eight, expensive computer. The most, look, now I'm a fan of the, of, of the iPhone. I'm an Apple girl all day long. I don't use Apple computers for my computer um, because I, I love HP. But uh, <clears throat> I will tell you that Apple in this sense would not be the most expensive computer. Some of you all are thinking, oh, I know that, it's a Mac. Nah. Uh, expensive computer, the most sophisticated and expensive computer would likely be a mini computer, a micro computer, a mainframe computer, or a touch screen. A mainframe computer or a touch screen. And it would be C, mainframe, okay? What is a mainframe computer? I've listed it here. You can look at this whenever you get an opportunity. You can also Google it, okay? Again, I am doing this for people who are struggling with the informational use uh, system usage and application for the pharmacy part. Remember, that is on your blueprint. If you're taking this test underneath the 2019 requirements, you will see this as a blueprint to topic. Health information technology has done all of the following except improve patient care, improve reimbursement process, improve health care delivery, or reduce efficiency. Health information technology has done all of the following except reduce efficiency, okay? Remember, technology has been created to help us. Now, some of you guys may say, well, yeah, because they're using these robots, so how would it not reduce efficiency because they're using these robots, these robots don't know this, blah, 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 blah. That may be true. That may be your own opinion, too. Um, but in this case, it is being used to reduce the efficiency. Therapeutic duplication. Therapeutic duplication would include the patient getting what? Two antidepressants in the same class, a bronchodilator and an anti-inflammatory, a diuretic and ACE inhibitor, or a antidepressant and an anti-anxiety medication. What would be an example of duplication? Therapeutic duplication, what would be an example? If you said two antidepressants in the same class, pat yourself on the back because that is correct. It is two antidepressants in the same class, okay? If it's in the same class, that means that it's going to do the same thing for the customer, okay? Also, when it said duplication, we know that that word duplication means to have two of the same or for something to happen over and over again of the same thing. And so when you saw same, you should have known, okay? Again, I'm going to tell you that keywords are, are uh, understood or identified by common sense your common sense. If you know that same is the same thing as duplication, then you would have gotten this answer right. Everything in pharmacy does not have to be rocket sciences. Everything in pharmacy does not have to be, or rocket science, everything in pharmacy does not have to be like super hard to figure out. It's just, you need to utilize your common sense, okay? Um, so if you pick A, you got the answer right. 
super proud of you guys, okay? Um, before I get out of here, I want to explain to you how tutorials with Lindsay work. The first thing you're going to do is book your session using this link. Remember, the link is also in my YouTube description of my videos. I've gotten a lot of calls this week. I did take off yesterday, also uh, took off today, and I'm going to be off until Thursday of this week, which is December 26th, okay? So I took off Monday the 23rd, Tuesday the 24th, today the 25th, and then tomorrow the 26th. Y'all, I needed some time with my family. I'm hosting Christmas in my house this year, and I am already in the midst of preparing. We're going to start in just a little bit. And so I needed to get my mind right. So I admire and I appreciate your phone calls, but please know that I have been off. Um, however, I'm going to pick back up on Friday. And a couple of you guys have already booked, and I'm already booked Friday and Saturday, um, as well as that Monday. But here's the thing. Once you book, you go, people are saying, like, now what? Well, when you book, we automatically send you an email. That email is going to have your PayPal invoice, okay? So you can use American Express. You can use your MasterCard, your Visa, your Discover card, or you can use your debit card, which is normally a Visa, okay? Um, once you pay your PayPal uh, invoice, then you will need to download the Zoom app, okay? Some of you all are utilizing uh, the Zoom app on your mobile device. If you're using it from an iPad or a tablet, please download that app, okay? If you're going from your phone, please download the Zoom app. If you're going to use a computer or a laptop, you don't have to download the app. You can simply just click the link that I send in the email. Okay, but if you are using some type of mobile device, you need to download the app. I encourage you to log in and to try, or you don't have to log in, but I encourage you to click on the, the link um, at least maybe 10 to 15 minutes before our actual scheduled class time. So that way, whatever technical issues you may be experiencing, we can, you can kind of get them together and that way it doesn't interfere in our, um, in our session. Some of you guys are waiting till like the last minute to try to click on it and you're having issues because you're doing it from your phone and your phone is kind of crazy, and, you know, not recognizing what you're trying to do. If you are doing it from your phone, please go to your Google store or to your app store and uh, download the Zoom app. Once you do that, then you go back to the email that I originally sent you and click the class link. Once you click that link, it will automatically open the classroom on your mobile device. If you're doing this from a computer or a laptop, you don't need to download the app. You just need to click the link and it will automatically open on your computer. And then you'll see my pretty face. <laughs> um, it has been a complete pleasure. Uh, if you look over here on this picture, this was a couple of months ago and I worked with these two ladies. They passed their test. Um, and they were just really nice individuals. We worked together. We were actually at a yoga shop um, here in Houston. And I do tutorials wherever. And wherever people call me, you know, and they say, hey, Lisa, can you meet me in a Starbucks? Can you meet me at the library? Can you meet me at the yoga shop? Hey, I'm coming. You need me? I'm coming. Chop, chop. I'm there, okay? Um, but anywho, these two ladies were, were a pleasure to work with, and I'm just excited about them passing their exam. I know that you all are going to do great. You're going to do wonderful on your test. Don't worry about, you know, some of you guys are calling me and talking to me about test anxiety. You're calling and you're talking to me about test anxiety. I do believe that it is cool that you identify some of the things that you may struggle with. However, we don't want that identity or what you've been able to identify to be your identity, which means that, yeah, you may say I have text anxiety, but it should not be the driving force of your car, okay? You are the driver. You're the operator of your life. There are going to be many times that you're going to be faced with a test. As a matter of fact, you're faced with tests on your job that don't just always come in the form of paper and pen or an actual test that you see on the computer. It could be trying to keep your job and trying to work with a supervisor who doesn't like you. That's a test. So when you come to me and you tell me about text anxiety, but you've been able to keep that same job for the last five years and you've worked with the same supervisor for the last five years and you haven't gotten fired, then that lets me know that you can overcome and you're more than a conqueror. So do not allow things to keep you from where you need to be. There's nothing wrong with being fearful. 
but you have to figure out what's going to be greater. Is it your fear or is it your faith? And your faith needs to be the driving force of your life, not fear. If I, if I allow fear to, to run me and to drive me, I wouldn't be doing this YouTube. I wouldn't be helping you because initially when I got ready to do this, I was like, oh my God, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to start this. I don't know who's going to watch it. I don't know if this is going to be helpful. I have so many doubts. I had so many things I contemplated, but I got on here and I continued to do it. And now my first video that I've ever done on YouTube has over 13,000 views. That blows my mind every time I look at it. And I just started this in August. I'm telling you, faith over fear is what you have to allow to run you, okay? I'm not saying that I don't get nervous. I'm not saying that I ain't never been scared because if I told you that, I would be lying. But what I'm telling you is I cannot allow fear to paralyze me. There are too many people depending on me. There are too many people watching me from afar. That hasn't even said, congratulations, Lindsay. I'm proud of you, Lindsay. You're doing a great job, Lindsay. They haven't said it, but they're watching. And they're being inspired by what I'm doing. And so I say that to you. Somebody is watching you. Somebody is being inspired by your push, by your dedication, by your commitment. So don't give up. You come too far. You come too far to give up now. You've come too far to allow fear to put you in a place where you can't be great and be successful. Okay, this may be your first time taking this test. This may be your fourth time, but this time you're going to pass and you have to start declaring that in the atmosphere. Make a declaration in the atmosphere. Look, if you need to put it on your mirror before you get dressed every day and read it. I have a, 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 a note on my mirror in my restroom right on my side of the, of the counter. And it is an inspirational message to me. It may not make sense to other people who may come and use my restroom, but it makes a lot of sense to me. And it is what I need to see in order to keep me in a place where I can be used and be in, and keep myself in a place where God can continue to use me. And so and if, if it doesn't make sense to anybody else, that's fine, but I know what it's there for. And so that's what you need in order to keep positivity floating around you, then do it. Today is Christmas. Today is a very beautiful day. This holiday is celebrated all around the world, okay? It's one of the holidays that are celebrated all around the world. I pray that your Christmas is as beautiful as you. I thank God that YouTube has brought us together, and I wish you much success in your future and in your career. 2019 has been beautiful. 2019 has allowed us to see some things that 2018 didn't let us see. And as we go into 2020, the blessings are going to continue to pour in. May God continue to bless you and your family. The next time I see you, it will be 2020. Thank you so much for watching. I, I, I cannot tell you how much this channel has helped me and has helped me to just grow and be confident. And so I hope that that is exuding in your life. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. Don't give in. Don't walk away. Don't throw, don't throw nothing away. Okay? Don't second guess yourself, but continue to believe in yourself because you are truly on a path of greatness. If there's ever anything I can do, feel free to call me, 903-295-5933, extension 101. You can also email me, info at lwpschools.com. This has been a beautiful day. Hope to see you again. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to you and your family, okay? Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.